So anyway, so now you are able to see the slides, right? Yeah. So you are able to see the slides? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. So last class, uh, if you remember, uh, you know, so we started this plastic analysis. That is the last topic, you know, as far as this course is concerned. So the main reason why we did this plastic analysis, you know, you could have watched those videos or studied this one. So generally steel say it has a very high ductility and others, you know, the main this curve, okay. So which is the one which says a you know, huge uh, strength is there. So why don't we use this reserve strength or whatever, you know, we have in the steel by some, uh, this one, okay. And of course, and uh, so design is fine, but how to do the analysis also, like once a structure goes after elastic range, you say, now how the bending movements will be, how uh, you know, things are going to be. So that was a question we asked. So design is fine. You can do, you know, other uh, plastic design and others we have seen, but analysis point of view, say, so how, uh, you know, this uh, analysis, you know, looks like, okay. So this was the main uh, thing in our last class. Okay, so I have already explained what is the disadvantages of you know the elastic analysis. Like you see, only the top and bottom only will be yielding, but still the so much of uh, material is still in elastic, and it can take more load also compared to your uh, you know the whatever load working load itself. Okay, so why don't we cash this one? So and finally, you know, we have said all those things. So one most important assumption is in our plastic analysis, we ignore this strain hardening. Okay, so this portion we have ignored. So we are doing so this is our uh, you know the assumption okay so this is the most important thing so whatever plastic analysis you do say still uh, you know you are conservative only because you know you have not included the strain hardening also okay so this is the most assumption we made so this anyway in reality how hinges looks like but uh, generally in our uh, cases say okay so the assumptions was uh, you know something like this okay so like you know once a plastic hinge has formed you know that means you know the structure has collapsed or you know that's what we are calling as a mechanism okay so mechanism is essentially failure only we call this as a mechanism once a plastic hinge forms a mechanism itself and then elastic plastic movements and we calculate all those uh, details itself okay and another most important the simply supported beam set it's a very straightforward problem you know so anyway you know as you keep on increasing the load you see the plastic hinge forms here but generally in reality it will be like this okay but in our analysis say, what to do is we ignore this uh, you know the plus this region set the length of the hinge you know all those things we ignore we assume that it is simply only at that uh, point only so these are our assumption we did okay so that is how the collapse mechanism so as you keep on increasing the load but in reality it will be like this okay plasticity slowly spreads and you know, it goes on but we assume it to be collapsed like this. So once a hinge forms here, say, just it is like a rigid link, uh, you know, mechanism, like two pieces, you know, that is how, you know, we said, okay. So these are the other. And then how to do this uh, plastic analysis also, I explained you. The straightforward procedure, simple is uh, incremental procedure, we say, okay. Like you take the load, uh, you do the linear analysis only, okay. There is no plastic, this one. You do linear analysis, you find out the bending movements and others. And then you identify the places say, where bending moment is extremely high. So that is a uh, best, that is an obvious, you know, plastic hinge is going to form at that uh, place. Okay. So if it is indeterminate problem, say, so one hinge is not sufficient for collapse, two hinges are required. Uh, so what happens in this problem, what we saw was, so this is a place where, you know, you have to first hinge forms actually. You can easily calculate from the bending moment diagram. So once the hinge has uh, formed at this place, say, the structure will not take any more load. So this is a propped cantilever becomes a simply supported uh, beam itself. And then you, once again, you know, you, so the bending one diagram changes, okay? Initially you have this type of bending one diagram and then the bending one diagram changes to a, a ordinate simply supported beam. So it is essentially plastic analysis means, you know, you are doing elastic analysis only, but uh, you know, the bending one diagram uh, changes. Once hinge forms, say, your propped cantilever converts to simply supported, then, you know, so you will have variety of elastic analysis only. Okay. So this is what, you know, the easiest way. So you have the load say, so like, you know, 48 kilo newtons will be taken care by, you know, this is a proper cantilever. And once so uh, here the plastification happens and once it is a plastic say, our assumption is that this point cannot take any more extra bending movement. So whatever extra load comes, okay, has to be taken care by the remaining portion of the beam. So propped cantilever became simply supported. So now this is our uh, bending one diagram. Okay. So this is what we said in our last class. So this is how, if you see the stress strain curve, so it is like this linear only up to this portion, elastic only. So once hinge has formed, say, propped cantilever converted into simply supported. Once again, you are doing linear analysis only. Okay. And then you see you have this uh, second hinge here. 
and after this if it is a fixed fixed or something indeterminacy is more than you have you know this one so plastic analysis is essentially you know it's just uh, you know linear elastic analysis only but you may have to do three or four times until you know the structure uh, collapses okay so this uh, we said uh, you know so one you can find out load factors and other things also okay so this we explained in the last class so if you want to do that is also fine like you know you increase the keep on increasing the load you calculate 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 also but sometimes what we do is you uh, you know to calculate the load factor say we write as alpha p is a working load say alpha is your load factor like you know how much will be the load factor you know this alpha value at which uh, the structure your beam or whatever it collapses okay so this if you want to find out in terms of alpha say the same procedure only the incremental procedure you can make it in a systematic uh, way so you find out bending moments you find out alpha say alpha is anyway ratio between uh, plastic moment to ma1 the bending moment at that point so wherever alpha is low say that means that is a place where hinge gets uh, formed first so here in this problem we explain at this place is say this will be low so hinge gets formed here so once hinge gets formed say so automatically your propped cantilever becomes say, you know simply supported and once again things will get changed actually okay so you find out the next one and then you calculate these alphas and then the final alpha will be some of these uh, two alphas so this is how we calculate uh, you know this one and if you want you can put it in a excel sheet or you know spreadsheet kind of a thing you divide the problems into two like you know wherever hinges are formed like a b b c you know because hinge may get formed at b so you write this is systematically you write the bending moments from analysis residual moments say anyway mi is taken as zero you find out this one load factors you find out the lowest load factor you take it and then you recalculate the bending moments and then you go to stage 2 of the analysis so from stage 1 uh, propped cantilever stage 2 becomes your simply supported beam because already hinge has formed at corresponding position and then you redo the calculations okay and then you sum up the shape factors the load factors you will get the total uh, you know the load factor for your beam okay so this i already explained you for uh, pro, uh, this is a portal frame also so the only thing is you, know, you should be able to identify where hinge gets formed so that is very easy you draw the bending on diagram so whatever you have studied in your uh, structure analysis course you know you use it and you draw the bending moment and wherever the bending moments are high say so these are the places where uh, you know hinges will get uh, formed also so this problem no need to identify anything so you can just start with uh, you know the analysis so you just find out the bending moments say so automatically you know you know that this is a place where uh, you know the bending first hinge will get formed so once hinge get formed say so now you are fixed to fixed uh, frame so one end becomes fixed other end becomes hinged so you know the thing changes actually when you do the calculation next stage in the next stage also you calculate the bending moments and then the residual moments say uh, because in the first plastic moment we have 30 or 20 or whatever so that has to be subtracted so the residual moments whichever is the smallest actually so this is the place you know your hinge may get formed so that is your three so now this is stage two now once hint has formed this still structure will not collapse because other places it is still in the elastic range it has not reached the plastic thing so still it can take some more load also then you repeat the analysis now your fixed fixed frame became a fixed hinged now your fixed hinge became two hinges one here one here once again you do the analysis okay so you do like this now you identify the residual plastic moment where it is small say so that is a place you have to look out you know for uh, you know the a hinge will get formed here so the hinge forms here then here so now once again now still this uh, thing will take some more extra load because already you know there is a this place it has not uh, you know reached the plastic so once again you do the analysis you know assuming that these three are hinges and it is only this end is fixed and then finally say you find out all part which this also plastifies actual so it be and finally you sum up all the factors uh, you will get your uh, you know the plastic moment or sorry the load factor so this is a way okay so it is just nothing to do it is something like you know a linear elastic here once hinge forms say fixed fixed frame became a fixed and one and hinged once again you do linear analysis then two hinges have formed once again you do linear analysis like this you, know, you have to do it in a iterative way iterative way iterative way until all uh, you know you have uh, full hinges and it uh, collapses so this method is known as incremental method or and you can write a computer program uh, you know you can do it very amicable to computation and other things also and this method is widely used actually okay when you are having two story three story buildings you know so many plastic hinges are there so people use this uh, method itself 
but apart from this method if you want to do quick analysis like a manual for simple problems you know like a beams simple portal frames a single story or whatever so there are other methods also are available okay so one uh, is what we called as last class i explained you so all these methods is they are based on three conditions one is a equilibrium condition mechanism and yield condition okay so these three conditions if they satisfy you can get your uh, you know the collapse load or whatever so we have a static method basically that's a force based method or something we said so this method is uh, something you know linked to equilibrium and yielding actual okay so this with this will give us you know the a lower bound or whatever they say okay we will see in some problems also then upper bound is you know so it is something like you know uh, the mechanism and uh, you know the yield kind of a thing so this is our uh, second uh, you know the theorem itself and it gives you the lower uh, upper bound or whatever it has and finally there is a uniqueness theorem so if it satisfies all those equilibrium mechanism and yield then uh, you will get a you know unique load that is how you know these theorems comes into picture okay so this also explained in the last class and these are the assumptions what we told you know so like a plastic moment capacity is independent then hinges will form at which plastic rotations occur and this also we told the uh, length of plastic hinge is zero only you know? we ignore that the plastification or length of the hinge and others just is a point and rigid link mechanism yes you and of course ductility is very important if the material is not ductile you know once one place hinge forms say if the material is brittle you know automatically it breaks uh, you know so this indeterminacy or that will not help you so ductility is more uh, important here so steel structures it is very much applicable and of course we are ignoring you know right now axial force shear force and other things only we are uh, thing is you know the bending moment only is important for us okay and of course the river structure remains stable until formation of last plastic thing so this is also another assumption uh, you know which we use in analysis and of course loads acting on structure are considered to increase in proportion so one load is increasing so other load also increases in proportion and continuity is also maintained so this is what we said and the mechanism also we defined uh, like uh, you know uh, mechanism is essentially failure only okay how it fails so if it is have a simply supported beam say uh, this is your bending one diagram here so intuitively you can easily identify so for this to collapse is a one hinge is uh, sufficient so this is a collapse uh, mechanism so this is what we call as a you know, mechanism or failure how it fails suppose if the prop the cantilever say so we already just now we have seen you know two hinges are required you know to for the failure so this is a failure basically that means hinge here hinge here actually so this collapse mechanism now fixed fixed beam say it is more indeterminate uh, you know indeterminacy is two so three hinges are required one hinge here one hinge here one hinge here how these hinges forms depends on your bending moment wherever bending moment is high first hinge forms there then you know it it spreads to other uh, places only okay and of course we discussed beam mechanism if you are taking a portal frame you know so you can have variety of uh, mechanisms okay for complete collapse over complete collapse so many other things are there like a beam mechanism uh, which we just uh, shown here also and then you know the sway mechanism because portal frames if you are having horizontal loading you know so you can have a sway so this like four hinges uh, you know forms here and the whole portal frames it just sways in one direction then gable mechanism this is for inclined roofs you know how this fails then you can have a joint mechanism also so this happens in multi story frames you know so you can have a hinge forming in the column beam and others you know so automatically you know you will see a rotation at that uh, place also and you can have a combined mechanisms like you know combination of beam plus way or beam plus way plus joint this also will uh, happen basically okay so and of course the number of plastic hinges we said uh, redundancy plus one so this is just a you know the startup uh, things so if you know the redundancy you add one say that many hinges are required so for simply supported beam say how many hinges are required yeah. using that how many, what is the redundancy for simply supported beam Yeah, just now we said right what is r for simply supported beam yeah. r value is now what is the redundancy for simply supported beam yeah. so all of you are there yeah. the two are there okay what is the redundancy yeah. shruti is there right shruti sayesh is there no uh, yes sir um uh, what is r value indeterminacy 
for simply supported beam r is yeah. one sir so the simply oh. supported beam redundancy simply supported beam is determinate or indeterminate um it, um indeterminate sir be careful simply supported beam how many unknowns are there how many reactions we have you know See, for if you'd have this one say okay just put unknowns uh, two unknowns or whatever you have so how many equations you are having you know so three equations so three means you have you have to take horizontal also so now this support you will be having this also this also but here you will be having only three so three unknowns are there if you include horizontal and three equations two force equilibrium one moment equilibrium so three minus three is zero okay so it is a determinate structure you followed so r is uh, zero only so how many hinges are required so the hinges are one hinge is sufficient we have also seen right for simply supported beam say the hinge forms here and it collapses actually so if it is a propped cantilever say so indeterminacy is one so two hinges are required fixed fixed beam say indeterminacy is a two so two plus one uh, you know three hinges are required so these are like you know uh, you know the starting things actually so how many hinges are required and independent mechanisms also there are some simple uh, thumb rules are there but uh, not so important by visualization itself you know you should be able to identify the hinges and you should be able to identify the collapse and other things also okay so this for a fixed fixed beam we already said so now based on these methods you said two methods are there one is a static method or a equilibrium method i showed you like you know the equilibrium equation and yield uh, you know these two we use so this is how the method so what this method uh, we have to do is uh, you know if you take a simply supported uh, beam say okay, or simply supported or even a fixed fixed or whatever you have so let us take a fixed fixed beam match okay uh, i have already you know simply supported we have already seen so this is a fixed fixed beam and let us say you have uh, r u d l or whatever so you can take a concentrated load also yeah. so this is a fixed fixed beam okay so let us say concentrated load which is acting at the center okay uh, can you tell me what is the bending one diagram for this case yeah. so what is the bending one diagram for this one for a fixed fixed beam uh, subjected to concentrated load at p and l is the uh, you know is the length of this beam actually yeah. so what is the uh, you know the bending one diagram yeah. so where the bending moment will be maximum so all of you know what is the bending one diagram for this case yeah. suruti is there so you have done structure analysis so what is the bending one diagram so where bending oh, moment with what is it Huh. Um. Uh, the bending moment diagram, I think, will look like. Uh, yeah. It'll be the positive on both ends, and it'll be like. Yeah. Um, it'll be like three triangles, sir. Like okay. two above the axis and one below. Okay, very good. You know, so this is our bending moment diagram. So you remember, right? So this will be, and then uh, you know something like this. Okay, so this is our uh, bending moment diagram. So if you remember the values, I say I think this will be W L by eight. Okay, here also W is P L by eight. Uh, this is also P L by eight, and this portion also will be P L by eight. because of symmetry. Say everything will be same. Okay, and if I add top to bottom, say okay, so P L by eight, P L by eight. So this will be you see P L by four itself. That is how you see the bending one diagram. So now in our static method, say okay. So now uh, you tell me. Uh, where uh, bending moment is high, like uh, where uh, chances of plastic hinge getting formed. So where plastic hinges will form. So at the support bending moment is PL by eight. Here also PL by eight, and at the center, so just below the load also bending moment is PL by eight. Okay. Now where is where your plastic hinges will get formed? Yeah, see what are what is the locations of plastic hinges and since it is a fixed fixed beam say so you require not one hinge suppose if hinge forms below the load also the still structure will stand because this becomes like a two cantilever kind of thing itself okay so three hinges are required to for collapse of the structure so where are the locations of this plastic hinges yeah. Yeah. where plastic hinges will get where bending moment is high in this uh, fixed beam 
Uh, see, bending moment at the supports is also PL by 8. At this below the load also, it is a PL by 8. Okay. So, where the hinge will get formed? No. Now, tell me where hinge will get formed, where bending moment is high, you know. You just see the numbers and tell me. No. So this is a simple problem. You know? So where bending moment is high at the supports is also PL by 8. Below the load is also PL by 8. So what is your comment? Yeah. And three hinges are required actually. If you go by the uh, previous uh, simple that thumb rule, no, yeah, R plus 1 say. It is a 2 plus 1 is a three hinges actually. Okay. So where things will get formed. So three hinges are required. So if you see the three hinges, so bending moment at these three places you have. So one hinge here. So because uh, uh, the, at these places, you know, there is a chance of uh, you know having this uh, bending moment here. So three hinges are required basically. So now uh, you know, so the when when during a plastification, say what will happen is at all these places, okay. So the this place or whatever places are there, say okay. So the uh, plastic this will has to be empty. This also will be empty. This also will be empty actually. Okay, so this is how you know it happens. So the plastification happens, you know, all the three bending moments are same. They may reach, uh, you know, the plastic thing at a once or whatever for this problem. So now in the static equilibrium method, say what the main thing is, you draw the bending moment diagram. You just take the bending moment diagram from your analysis. Okay, and then what you do is you don't no need to worry about what is the bending moment value at those places. Just you should know the shape of the bending moment diagram. Only, okay. And then you identify, and then you because the hinges you know already how many hinges are required, where hinge will get formed or whatever. So the locations where bending moments is high basically, like in this problem, three places are there, say. So now these three hinges definitely see they are going to get plastified. So the value is MP, MP, MP is here, and now the total height of this uh, thing says a PL by four. So then the total height of this portion, say once things gets plastified because of symmetry, this becomes a two MP. So you just equate say so 2 mp is uh, you know pl by 4 so the collapse load say is uh, you know 8 mp by l actually. so this is a straightforward uh, you know the method so which we use uh, you know for simply supported beam and now suppose simply supported beam subjected to udl say okay uh, now let us say this is uh, you know much little bit uh, udl and let us say the load is you know some w or whatever this one you know so what will be the bending one diagram now for this case and let us say this is a W uh, for UDL say. So this also will be, you know, you have to draw like this only. And now because it is UDL say, uh, what, what type of shape will be there? Triangles or what will be there? Uh, see, this is a bending one diagram for redundant. You know, if you remove the load because of symmetry, you can use, you know, M, A, M, A or whatever. And now you have to use a simply supported beam. Okay. So the bending one diagram will be using something like this. Okay. So this is a bending one diagram. Uh, any of you remember the values? Uh, what is the value of the bending moment at the support? And if span is L for simply supported, uh, sorry, this fixed fixed beam uh, subjected to UDL. Yeah. So what is the value here? The so WL square by 12. See, these values should be at your fingertips, okay? WL square by 12. Now at the center, how much it will be? See, concentrated load, it is very easy. But now here at that center point, the maximum value says, so this portion actually, okay? So this one will be, you know, so this value is WL square by 24. So these are the bending moments. So now here, if you see, say, where hinge will get formed first here? Yeah. So where bending moments are high, at the supports or at the center? All of you are there. Yeah. So where bending moment is high. I have written the values also. At the where hinge will get formed first. Support or at the center. In the previous the this you at the supports. Oh, excellent. Because support this is high. But once bending uh, hinges will get formed at the supports, still beam will stay or it will collapse. See, now there is a fixed fixed beam. Now hinges have formed actually at the supports. One hinge here, another hinge here. Uh, now still the beam, now what, what type of beam is yours now? Still it will stand or it will collapse? 
So hinges have formed at the supports. Uh, now what will, what is the mechanism? Uh, what type of now uh, beam has become what type of beam now? So now you are uh, once it if you see incremental methods uh, now hinges are formed at the supports. Now this uh, fixed fixed beam has what type of beam now it is? So still the beam will take load or it will collapse? It's simple, I am asking you. Uh. Are you there? Yeah. Now you are uh, fixed to fixed beam. Supports have become plastic hinge. What type of beam now it is? Yeah. See what type of beam it is now? Uh, Sayash is there, Ashwin, Sruti. Uh, now, what type of beam now it is? Both the uh, fixed fixed have become now hinges. Uh, what type of beam it is now? Sayash, are you there? Ashwin. Uh, okay, so tell me now fixed fixed beam, both the ends are fixed, okay? Now at both the ends here now hinges have formed. Now what type of beam it is? Ah, fantastic. So it is simply supported. Very good. Okay. So now it is simply supported. That means still uh, you know your beam can uh, take the load actually. Now for simply supported beams, uh, so for it collapse, one more hinge is required. Which now where is that probable hinge location is at the center point. That is how anyway the beam gets collapsed. Okay. So anyway, so this is our uh, bending one diagram set. Now, if you want to do this uh, static method or, method or whatever we just uh, said previously, okay. so if you want to do this uh, static method, say, okay. Now, so if you want to use the static method, so what one we have to do is, so now at the formation of collapse, say, now all the bending ones are different. Here, WL square by 12, there, WL square by 24. So what we assume is like this, actually. So this is our, uh, you know, the bending one diagram for uh, UDL, okay. So this is my bending one diagram. So what we assume here is, now at the point of collapse, so first hinge gets formed here. So this value is MP, okay. Now you are simply supported as become sorry your fixed fixed became a simply supported beam. Now what happens? The load will be carried by the this uh, center portion. Now here also the uh, movement will be at the time of collapse and say so this also will be equal to MP only. Followed so the MP so the total uh, if you try to find out say so the total movement is you know two times uh, you know MP so this is bad because symmetry. So what so the static method say the main advantage the main thing is. You just get the diagram from your uh, linear elastic analysis. Don't worry about uh, bending moments. Now, if you don't remember these, uh, now also it's fine. WL square by 12, WL square 24. You have to just identify, you know, where, how this beam is going to collapse. You have to visualize and then you identify the places, okay? Now, anyway, during the collapse, say, three hinges means at all the hinge uh, movement will be same only. It is, it has to be equated to MP only. So here also it is MP, here also it is MP and totally is a two MP itself, okay? Now this is a 2 MP say. So we already know from a linear elastic analysis. So this is a 2 MP will be equal to you know WL square by 8 actually. You know, uh, if I sum up so WL square by 24 plus WL, you will get WL square by 8. So you are in plus this collapse load essentially, or this W. Okay, so this will be 16 uh, times MP by L square. Actually. So this is how you know we try to calculate. Okay. So you just take the bending on diagram from your linear elastic analysis. You forget about the numbers. Don't worry, double L square by 12, all those things, forget about it. At all the places, wherever you are going, the hinge is going to get formed. The value is MP, MP, MP only, okay? And then you use it, your equilibrium method, right? So 2 MP, so the total thing has to be double L square by 8. So you find out the load itself. So this is how we try to solve by our, uh, you know, this is static method. So you find out the standard elastic diagram, uh, you know, you find out all the locations you make it them mp 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 equal itself and then you do the equilibrium or whatever so you will get this numbers itself so this also i will just to show you for this uh, portal frame also sorry this uh, propped cantilever so propped cantilever we have already seen uh, you know like two hinges are required or whatever so what to do is to get the bending one diagram so this is a bending one diagram you draw from your linear elastic analysis okay two rectangles or whatever you have now at this place, I think we already wrote it. So that 3 PL by 16, 5 PL by 32, you know, but no need to worry. Anyway, during collapse, say, 
you will have hinge will be here hinge will be here so bending moment at this place will be empty here also it will be empty so this anyway we know okay now using this equations you know mp mp both of them should be same and equal to mp only so now now you know the bending moment sir so it is something like inverse problem you know the bending moment now you find out the collapse load actually so you do equilibrium you know for bc and then uh, you know and then overall equilibrium say you will get automatically the uh, you know the collapse load actually okay so you just take the bending moment diagram from your uh, linear elastic analysis and then you know you wherever hinges are there say so you equate them to mp and then you do equilibrium actually it is something like you know you are borrowing the bending moment diagram and then you are and you are making equating the highest bending moments to mp and then you are once again solving the uh, once again equilibrium and then you find out the collapse load so this is what we call as you know the static method itself it's a straightforward it's a simple but if you want to do you know complicated say this method becomes very problematic and very difficult to solve actually so what we we'll use this is virtual work method okay that is what we said based on the kinematic uh, theorem itself so this method is something like uh, you have studied right in mathematics also or in many places if you want to solve any problem so you are having two methods one is by equilibrium other one is by energy method or virtual work you know these type of methods it is something like you know eigen value eigen vector problems in mathematics you know if a matrix eigen value eigen vector so it is something like you know you solve the matrix first you get eigen values and then you solve for eigen vectors okay or you first get the eigen vector you assume eigen vector and then you get the eigen value also so it is something like you know virtual merk method kind of thing itself so here what to do you do is first of all you know you forget about bending moment diagrams and all other things also you have to just visualize how your structure is going to collapse actually okay so now you do, based on that that means you have to first able to identify the mechanism okay so how a structure is going to collapse it is something like you are knowing the eigen vector you know how it is uh, mode shape or whatever then you are recalculating the load itself and then you you form the mechanism see like for example say simply supported beam so we already know so this is how it is going to collapse actually so hinge is going to get formed so this is a theta theta or whatever say so l by 2 into theta itself now what you have to do is so well, you know the collapse mechanism now you find out internal work done external work done you equate these two and you will get your uh, result itself so now internal work done say at the plus so uh, you are having only plastic hinge at this place okay so the hinge is uh, here so the work done say you uh, more for because the movement you have to add rotation itself so this angle say basically theta plus theta that becomes a two theta say so this is our internal work mp theta plus theta itself and then work done by the displacement of the load okay so since it is a udl say so you know all of you know how to calculate this udl say you know so you can use this uh, simple uh, you know you have to do the integration or whatever but generally uh, suppose if it is a udl say so to find out the work done by the load so this is how you have to do okay so you take up to this portion say so you take a small strip uh, here and then you know w into do x and then two times you know 0 to l by 2 this integral has to be done or you know in our strength of materials you know instead of that one what we do is uh, you know we take w into l by 2 and then we find out the load here say so you can multiply these two and you can get your internal work so this is for udl but if it is a concentrated load it is very straight forward okay so it's very simple we all know these uh, things it's simple so you equate these two say okay so this is our work done by the load and internal work done by your uh, you know the movements here and so these two you calculate w l squared by 4 into theta so you equate these two, say you will get the collapse uh, you know this plastic movement here and you can even find out the collapse load also that is 8 mp by l square okay so this is a collapse whatever load here so of course static method also will give you the same thing this also will give you the same thing in static method you are solving equilibrium you are getting the bending moment diagram and then wherever hinges are there so you are equating them to mp and then you are solving okay here what we are doing is you find out the collapse mechanism and then from the collapse mechanism you equate internal work external work and then you get the collapse load itself so both the things are same it is like eigen value you find out then you find out eigen vector or you first find uh, you know eigen vector you know you find out the eigen value okay so we, this is this up this approach is extremely you know easy so like for example for this uh, this uh, this beam say fixed fixed beam say now only difference between Uh, fixed fixed and then uh, simply supported beam although the load is same here you are having three hinges actually okay so now here what will be the external work done so here it is mp into uh, you know theta mp into 2 theta okay so this is uh, into 2 theta so this is the uh, work done by your movement internal work but when it comes to fixed fixed beams how many hinges are there what are uh, how many hinges are there 
here you are having only one hinge in fixed fixed what happens see how many hinges are there here for fixed fixed uh, so i think you are typing in the chat box okay uh, so how many hinges are there for fixed fixed uh, sayash ashwin surti so how many hinges are required uh, just now we told you right See, for fixed to fixed, say how many hinges? Yeah. See, for simply supported beam, we had only one uh, MP that is at the center. Okay, so that's why internal work was MP into T theta. At the supports, anyway, bending moment is zero. Okay, so that nothing comes here. But for fixed to fixed beam, what happens? What is the movement? You are having movement at the supports also. So what will be the internal work? How many contributions will be there? Uh, Suruti is there, Ashwin, Sayash. Uh, three, okay, good. So three are there, okay, so very nice. So you are having three. So now what will be your uh, internal work done? So here also it is MP. Here also it is MP, here also it is MP3 plastic. So the work done will be MP into theta. Okay, so this is for this end actually. Plus MP into another theta will be there. Of course, it is a symmetric problem, it is same, this support actually. Then we have MP at the center also. So the MP at the center point will be MP into two theta actually. So this is the internal work done for a fixed fixed beam. So you have to take care of all the three wherever hinges are there. Okay, so this is how we take. So this so this becomes a 4 mp into theta and of course the work done by the displacement this remains the same whether it's simply supported or uh, whether it is a this itself double l and equate these two say so this is your plastic movement or your double you say is 16 times l square by uh, sorry 16 times mp by l square okay so this is our uh, collapse load actually and if you compare simply supported beam and fixed beam say so for fixed simply supported beam Collapse load is 8 MP per L square. So it takes very 8, 8 MP, but for fixed fixed beam say, so it is 16 times, you know, the load is almost, uh, collapse load is a double compared to a simply supported beam itself, okay? And now if you are having a, this uh, propped cantilever say, so here also the no need to draw the bending one diagram or anything like that. So here you have to first uh, draw the collapse mechanism. So we already know for propped cantilever say, so it will be having uh, two hinges actually, okay? So two hinges, one below the load, another below the load so this is a rigid length mechanism we are saying so two hinges one mp here another mp here okay so this mp and then mp itself okay so this anyway the hinge there is no already it is a hinge so there is no bending moment here so anyway the work done will be the load carrying it is if we take theta theta if it is a symmetric say so this will be pu into l by 2 into theta so this is at this distance okay so force into load so this is l by 2 into theta so here you are having a load say so p into l by 2 into theta is your external work now when it comes to the internal work you know so you have to do you know two plastic units one here another here so this becomes mp into theta okay so this is comes from this support then here mp into two theta so this is at this support now here anyway this already it is a hinge so there is no plastification or anything happens here so these are two hinges so you equate these to say you will get your 6 mp by l okay so the difference between the previous process static method and this one is the static method you have to do linear elastic analysis you have to draw the bending one diagram and uh, you have to identify the places and then you equate them to mp and then you do equilibrium now with this kinematic method or work method say no need to get any bending one diagram for you just based on your uh, you know the collapse mechanisms how many hinges are required you have to draw this collapse mechanism how it is going to collapse actually okay and then you know you use internal work external work you equate this one you will get the collapse load so this virtual work method is very easy you know in my practice you know it's very simple and then you know people this is a widely used procedure compared to static uh, method also but if you want to do computer programming and others say then that incremental method whatever i showed you in the starting that is uh, best actually, okay and now let us see a fixed fixed beam say with uh, you know this one of course you can do incremental method you can do static method you can do kinematic method so here the kinematic method is the one which is very easy you know? otherwise static method means you have to draw the bending one diagram and you have to do all those things 
But for kinematic methods, no need to draw any bending one diagram. Just you have to identify the mechanism. Of course, a bending one diagram, if you have, it helps you to identify where hinges are going to get formed. So in this problem, say, because it's a fixed to fixed beam, three hinges are required, which already, you know, and where hinges are going to get formed. So the collapse may one hinge here, one below the load, because already we know, and one here actually. Okay, it is not symmetric. So three hinges. So you draw the collapse mechanism, say. So this is our collapse mechanism. Okay, because it is not symmetric. So let us say this angle is a theta, say. So this angle is a beta, you know. So you can equate the relation also. So, you know, L by 3 into theta, say, will be equal to 2L by 3 into beta because delta, you know, you can write in terms of this way or you can write in terms of beta. You equate, you know, you will get your uh, relationship between theta and beta itself, okay? So, theta is a 2 times a beta, you know, you will get for this problem. Now, you have to calculate the work done. So, the external work, say, it is simply P into delta. And delta E is, you know, 2L by 3 times beta, or you can write in terms of theta also, L by 3 into theta. So, this is the one. So, when it comes to the internal work, say, so internal work, you are having three hinges. So, one MP here, okay. So, this MP becomes MP into theta, okay. And then, uh, you know, here also you are having a MP. So, this becomes MP into beta. So, this MP into beta at the support C, this is at support A. And at this place, say, here also you are having MP, the plastification. So this becomes MP into theta plus beta. So this is your MP into 6 times beta. So now you equate, okay. So MP into 6 times beta is equal to, you know, a PW into 2L by 3 into beta, okay. So you equate them and then you will get the collapse load actually. So this is a, for this problem, it turns out to be 9 MP by L. So this way you can calculate, uh, you know, the collapse load for uh, this one based on simple, uh, you know, the mechanism concept. Okay. Uh, so now similar, now this you just see, okay, this is a propped cantilever beam, okay. Two loads are there. Yeah, now you tell, now how many hinges are required to collapse this uh, propped cantilever? Yeah. So where hinges are going to get formed? Uh, tell me. So for propped cantilever, so how many hinges are required? Now, what is indeterminacy? Just now we said, right? How many hinges are required for propped cantilever? Now, how many hinges are required? And you tell me where are the hinge locations? And we don't want to use static. You can use static method also. You can use a kinematic method. So can you guess the mechanism? How where hinges are going to get formed? See, first of all, how many hinges are required? No. No, Sruti is there. No, Sruti or uh, Sayash or uh, Ashwin is there, right? No. So where bending moments will be high generally, you know, by looking at the graph without any values, where you will have bend high bending moments. No. At the support and under load. Okay, very good. And now which load it is? Uh, 50 or 30 or how we have to decide? So under 50 alpha, it will be there or under 30 alpha. So whatever you told is correct actually. Now you are having a issue. So under which load is the value will be high actually. Okay. So like 50 times two loads are there. So where we have to take the value? 30 times is there, 50 times is there. Okay. So now uh, you have only two hinges are required. You cannot have three hinges, you know, below the both the loads, so two hinge, uh, you know, that is not uh, possible. Okay. Because it will collapse. So now how do we handle this issue? So what we try to do is, you know, I'd love to, so two hinges are required. So one hinge anyway, at the fixed, it is perfectly fine. Or one hinge below, the R hinge can form at AB case actually. Okay. A under A under B or under A, under C, you followed, right? So these are the possible uh, two cases here. So now if you don't, if you cannot decide, so what to do is you calculate load for both the cases, you know, and then you can decide itself. So you, this method you can do by virtual work or you can do by this, uh, both the cases also. So if you want to do by static methods, say, so you have to draw the bending one diagram. So this is a bending one diagram. So here it is a M. 
so this is a bending one diagram for this propped cantilever okay so m here at the support and here it is 73.4 times alpha minus m by 3 and 86.6 times alpha minus 2 m by 3 and these are your points so a b c d so this is a this is b then this is c and this is d actually so if you want to solve this by static methods this is a very interesting problem so two hinges only are required so one combination is a bending moment hinge forming at the support as well as under 50 times alpha only okay that is a and b okay that means hinge has formed at 50 a and b so that is under the load so that means a is a support and then under 50 times alpha so these are the here only hinges are getting formed so let us see what happens so when hinges are formed say whatever may be your bending moment value so here also it will be plastic moment so this also it will be mp only so these two will be mp mp only is possible okay so from the static so m is equal to mp and mp is equal to this one and m is also mp only so if you solve these equations mp comes to this side so alpha is mp by 52 so this is your load factor r alpha is equal to mp by 52 so the collapse load will be 50 times alpha say. so 50 into you know mp by 52 or whatever so this is the collapse load and other one will be you know uh, that is a 30 times alpha so 30 into mp by 52 so these are the collapse loads actually but the problem what happens is if you take alpha as mp by 52 say okay now uh, you know without uh, looking here say can you tell me hinge will form under b or c where bending moment is high at B or C, just to look at the diagram. So where bending moment is high at B or C? Uh, at C. Hmm. At C. So whatever we have taken is wrong, right? This A and B. Automatically, your problem tells you. So if you just check the bending one diagrams at C, assuming alpha is MP by 52, you will get 1.08 times MP. Now, as already our theorem, you know, equilibrium yield mechanism. So at any point in the beam, say, bending moment cannot exceed MP itself. So this itself is uh, not valid and this is uh, you know, wrong. Automatically, the, if you do analysis also, you will get it. But before itself, you can easily identify, you know, that happens. So this is wrong. Yet. So this is not possible at all. Okay. Now you go for the next one. That is A and C itself, say. So A and C, this also is equal to MP, MP. Now you solve. Alpha is MP by 55. Now, if you check bending moment at B, say 0.67 times MP. So that means it is perfectly fine. So beam here, it is still in the elastic, uh, elastic in zone, you know, at B itself. So this is a correct mechanism. So now you are all collapse load. Alpha is MP by 55. Now your collapse load is 50 times alpha. So 50 into MP by 55. And other one is, you know, 30 times uh, you followed at MP by 55. And how the beam is going to collapse is hinges at A and C itself. Okay, So this is how the beam is going to collapse. So you'll have a hinge here, then uh, you know, the hinge here itself. So two hinges are there. So this is a collapse mechanism. So you can use your static method, say, in uh, you know, a simple uh, fashion, this, you can compute this uh, numbers also. Okay, And you can also solve this problem by kinematic method also. In kinematic method also, so you do mechanisms. So you assume this mechanism. Another mechanism will be, you know, like this actually. One hinge here, another hinge here. You find out internal work done, then external work done. And then, you know, you can calculate, say, both the cases you do. And you can verify that, you know, the second one only will be the best one, actually. You can just check, actually. Okay. So fine. I will stop here. We will continue in our uh, tomorrow's class. So if there are any questions or doubts, you can ask me. Sir, one doubt. Ah, tell me. Why? Why did you only consider a combinations of a with b and c? You check the three hinges. You are saying. No, I'm saying with combination of b and c can also be there, right? You, you try. You get the alpha value. Right, but like uh, we we have to check those combinations as well. Don't yes, 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 but that is uh, no, no, that means suppose if a hinge forms at uh, this place, say that is at uh, C or whatever. No. Suppose if hinge forms at C, what happens? See, suppose let us say the first hinge has formed at C. Now, now what will happen to your beam? It will collapse or it will stay? It will stay. What happens to this portion? This portion of the beam, we are having another portion. So this portion is fixed only. You followed, and you are saying hinge is not forming here. So hinge is forming only at B and C. And now what happens here? You tell me it will stay or collapse. Tell me what happens to this portion. Okay, uh, right, right side will stay. Uh, right, this will stay. It, it is like a cantilever only. But what happens to this portion? Gone, no. Yes, sir. 
it will collapse actually uh, this is what we say partial collapse of the beam or something like that okay but you can try you you can calculate hinges at b and c but uh, why we have not calculated was because if uh, first hinge forms at uh, you know b say that is also a problem for us okay so suppose first hinge forms at b say okay, at the support no hinge forms now what happens if uh, hinge forms only at b so this also if you see this case uh, now at the fixed support no hinge is forming now let us say hinge has formed at b now what happens not at c uh, then what will happen same partial collapse uh, partial collapse but this portion will stay because it's a cantilever uh, case also so anyway if you are looking at overall collapse of the beam say whatever case you told b and c whether it is a logical or uh, what is your comment now right sir so like b yeah. and c would not be favorable no, no, that's what i'm mean. what you this portion will be there you understand right some portion of that is something like partial collapse you can say we are looking for complete collapse of the beam say the only case is a and b or a and c the support right, only has to go understood okay. sir but you, if you want, you calculate B and C also. Just uh, anyway, this problem also we have seen, right? A and B was wrong, uh, you know, but still uh, this condition was violated. No, if you want, you try it also. Okay. Yes, sir. So, any more uh, things? No, sir. Understood. Thank you. Okay. So, if there are no questions, uh, you know, so we'll stop here and we'll continue in our. Uh,